Hello everybody and welcome to another Twilight Zone review. Today it is Season 2, Episode 10, A Most Unusual Camera, written by Rod Serling and starring Fred Clark as Chester, Gene Carson as Paula, and Adam Williams as Woodward. And this episode is just a fun, fairly light episode that I'm not sure totally makes sense at the end, but it's entertaining enough. So I'll get right to it. We start in a room with two crooks, a husband and wife, and they're talking about what they just stole from a curio shop, I believe it is. And the husband, Chester, is just complaining about everything, about how all the stuff they got was junk, and so on and so forth. And Paula brings up that, you know, they stole this camera. And Chester starts examining the camera, he's still complaining, and I guess just he figures he might as well take Paula's picture. So she stands by the window and he takes her picture. Nothing unusual about that. But then a few minutes later, after he continues to complain, uh, her picture comes up and the picture looks different than her. She has a fur coat on in the picture. And Chester says this must be some kind of gag camera where they just put the faces on pictures that are already in, you know, inside. Interesting theory. But then a few minutes later, they are going through the rest of the things that they stole, and they open up a chest, and the fur coat from the picture is in the chest. So we next go to nighttime, and Chester can't sleep. He's trying to figure out, you know, how this happened, happened how this, this picture happened. And so Paula gets up out of bed, and, you know, they're talking more about it, and they shoot another picture of the door. And there is a man in the picture who isn't with them. And, you know, Paula says, oh, it's my brother Woodward. And they say, well, he's not here, you know, so the camera, you know, who knows what's going on with it. And minutes later, Woodward appears right at that spot of the door where the camera took the picture. So now, you know, we go to the second half of the episode and they're figuring the camera must, you know, take pictures five minutes into the future. So they're discussing how to use the camera and it is interesting that Chester first discusses using the camera for good, like giving it to science or to the world and maybe some good can come of it. But then Woodward turns on the television and he's watching horse racing and Chester gets this idea, we'll take pictures of the winner's board before the race has happened and we'll know all the winners and we'll make a lot of money. So they decide to use the camera just for their own personal gain, which was a big mistake. But they actually do go to the racetrack and take pictures, and this actually works. They win a lot of money at the racetrack, and we see all this happen. So, And, and this whole thing is played more as a comedy than as a drama, and that's a very interesting way to go with this. So we go back to the hotel and we can see that they've won a lot of money and, you know, they're counting all their winnings and a waiter comes in the room. And what's significant about this is that he looks at the camera and he mentions that he notices, he reads that it only takes 10 pictures. So, you know, Chester said, when he leaves, Chester says maybe he's wrong. You know, who knows how many pictures it takes. He could just be telling us that. And... You know, the brother Woodward and Paula, they're not so sure. They say, what if there are only two pictures left? And they basically argue about this. And when the brother Woodward and Chester are arguing, they accidentally take a picture, leaving them with only one. So, you know, Chester's upset about this. But when the picture comes out, it's a picture of Paula screaming. So Chester concludes that it must be because someone attacked her, which must be, you know, Woodward, the brother. Where he came up with this logic, I don't know. This is where logic completely goes out the window, and you either go with this episode or you don't. So then Woodward says, well, it must have been you. You know, they blame each other for the reason why she's screaming in the future, and they argue, and they fight, and they both wind up falling out the window, and this looks really ridiculous. It doesn't look real at all. And they actually don't show any bodies, which I understand at the time you couldn't, but I don't think this helps the episode any either. So then Paula's upset about what happened because her brother and her husband are gone, but she's only upset for a minute because she realizes that now all the money and possessions are all hers. So for jokes, kind of like rubbing it in, she takes a picture of the two men, you know, falling out the window, 
And then she thinks she's got it made. She's getting ready to leave when our good friend, the waiter, comes back in. And he starts taking all the money. She says, you know, that's my money. I'll call the police on you. And he tells her basically he knows that she's wanted, all the things she's done. He did a background check on her. So he's basically blackmailing her for the money. But he says he won't leave her empty-handed. He kind of mocks her. And he looks at the last picture, and he says, you know, hey, there's more than two bodies here, this picture you took out the window. There's actually three. So instead of her just looking at the picture, uh, like a smart person would do, she goes up to the window, knowing, I mean, where would another body come from? And she actually trips over a cord or something and falls out the window. And this looks slightly better than the first time we got this, but it still looks pretty fake. And then the waiter's smiling, and he looks at the picture one more time. But you know what? Now he sees a fourth body there. How did he only see three the first? Did he just notice there's a fourth one there now? Makes no sense at all. So then, if you did notice that, why would you go by the window? But, of course, he goes and stands by the window. And he falls out the window. And I guess, basically, that's just how it ends. The moral of the story is... Uh, you know, don't mess with cameras that can tell the future, I guess. <laughs> I'm not really sure. But the thing is, this episode doesn't really make that much sense, um, the ending, really. But there's a good lesson to be learned in it. And it doesn't take itself seriously, so you can deal with some of the inconsistencies. I was entertained by this episode. It's nowhere near perfect, but it's watchable and rewatchable. And I give a most unusual camera, 3 out of 5. So three out of five for this episode, most unusual camera. Thanks for watching.